I would say like, listen, go B BTM, go behind the meter, right? And build it. Um, and once you do, you will you will hedge yourself at least for the short term basis, right? And then SP6 kicks in. So then if you want to could be grid connected, then you get curtailed if you're over 75 megawatts, which pretty much every AI data center now is, right? So there is a dichotomy, you're totally right. You are going to be net short no matter how you see it, because in ERCOT, you want to be grid connected. They are, I think, I think they also released a CLR, right? And the PG uh, ones, which are basically saying like control the large loads, come on in, but we will control you. Um, and you know, there's a concept that I've been um, advised, like talking to some of the caucus members in, in Texas. Um, which is the idea of virtual peaking plants, which we can talk about because I think there's a slide on SP6. But the idea over here is like when they when they get curtailed and they do have load shedding. By the way, I have a very, very different view of why that is not a good idea for AI data centers. Um, we can talk about that in a bit. But if we are supposed to go down that path, then you can use that like the SP6 mandate of curtail curtailable load as a virtual peaking plant to provide some inertia to the grid, which I think is what you're talking about. So it does give the extra electrons. Question is if, if the AI data centers are willing to do that.